Hey, it's Seth Andrews. This is just a bonus clip for you this week. Runs about seven minutes. It's a full episode from my second podcast, which is getting noticed and taking off, and I would love to have you listen. It's called True Stories with Seth Andrews. Five to ten minute vignettes that release every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And it can be about pretty much anything. Ancient history or something in the news that happened last week. Celebrity trivia. True crime. Weird news. And what I'm about to play for you is an episode that's actually scheduled to release in a few months. But you get to hear it early. It's called The World's Most Dangerous Toys. And if you like what you hear and you'd like to hear a lot more in your podcast app, search for and subscribe to True Stories with Seth Andrews. They're fun to produce and I think fun to listen to. So crank it up and enjoy this seven minute clip The World's Most Dangerous Toys. I'm Seth Andrews. And what you're about to hear is a true story. I'll have to admit, it is a common thing for people to say at my age. Maybe it's common for everybody who survived their childhood. We talk about the crazy and stupid things that we did that somehow didn't maim or kill us. Well... Today, we're going to take a wild journey through some of the most popular children's toys of decades past. These are toys now discontinued or banned outright. Toys like the one called the Gilberts. But I'm going to come back to the Gilbert here in just a few minutes. The 1970s saw a great toy called Clackers. I had some clackers growing up. These are two hard acrylic balls. They're about the size of a golf ball. They were tied together with string. And you'd grab the middle of the string and then begin to move your hand up and down so the balls would move and they would clack together. And for reference, here is what that sounded like. Of course, the uh, television commercials didn't show the kids who would get the balance wrong and then take a heavy, high-speed acrylic ball to the eye socket. What about lawn darts? We talk a lot about lawn darts when we talk about dangerous toys. The family-friendly yard game looks a lot like horseshoes. You stand at one end of the yard. Your opponent stands at the other. You've got a target right below you maybe a hundred feet apart, and then you take a weighted 12-inch metal-tipped spear and you would throw it up in the air to land on your target or on your opponent. Lawn darts were banned after thousands of impalements and the deaths of three children. It seems like toy guns have been with us since forever, but they were especially huge in the 1950s. Remember that a lot of movies and TV shows feature the gunslingers, you know, the cowboys, the good guys, and the bad guys. Well, Mattel was selling a toy gun. It was called the Belt Buckle Derringer, a tiny toy gun that would fire ping pong balls using what they called magic crystals. But those magic crystals were calcium carbide, a dangerous chemical because if it happened to get wet, the powder would explode. The late 20th century saw the marketing of children's mini hammocks. Oh, we all love a good hammock. You just stretch them out between two trees or poles and hop on and kick back. You bet your child can string up their own personal kid-sized hammock for their relaxing nap. And hopefully that net bed wouldn't spin and twist around their neck when they tried to stand up. Three million of those were recalled back in the 1990s. That same decade saw this brilliant Barbie accessory, rollerblades. That sounds benign enough, doesn't it? Rollerblades for your Barbie doll. 
The problem was that these skates had a sparking device on them. The same kind of sparking device that cigarette lighters have. Yes, your kids, too, can roll Barbie and make fire. Back in 2017, some genius in China decided that children would just love to shoot their own toothpick crossbow. And I am not making this up. Tiny crossbow, you pull back the drawstring, you place a toothpick in the slot, and then you could fire that sucker up to 60 feet. Oh, no. No, there's nothing dangerous about that. About 15 years ago, there was a multinational recall of something called aquadots. These are colorful little BB-sized beads. And kids could make all kinds of designs with them. Essentially, you had a plastic tray, and then you would put those beads down and array them in different shapes and colors. You were making a kind of art. And once you had it where you wanted, you would spray those beads with water, and they would fuse together. And then you'd take some time and let everything dry before lifting your art off of that tray. You could display it wherever you want. Of course, as kids so often do, many put those beads in their mouths, and some of those beads were swallowed, and those beads were coated with the chemical compound GHB. GHB is a hallucinogenic and sedative that you and I know better as the date rape drug. And this stuff was real. It existed. It was sold over the counter to parents and their children. And these are just a few examples of how amazing it really is that many of us survived our childhood. But wait, I promised you that I was going to come back to that toy called the Gilbert. I think this may be my favorite of our examples today. It was named after its creator, This is the guy who invented the Erector set, Albert Gilbert. It was sold back in the early 1950s for about $50. That's hundreds in today's money. And Gilbert encouraged young children to become scientists, chemists. This game allowed kids to set up and cause and observe actual chemical reactions. And of course... They would need that included Geiger counter because these kids were handling actual glass jars filled with radioactive uranium. It is no wonder that the Gilbert U-238 has gone down in history as one of the top 10 most dangerous toys of all time. And this astounding tale of terrible toys is a true story. True Stories Podcast.com.